Okay. So the second method to actually see that we we'll actually look at to actually solve this problem would use what we'll call a bitwise operator. And what it will do is that it will, so will subtract the value of one from the number that is the power of two. And if we get one, if we get one, we know that that number is what a power of two. Sorry, if we get the if the last number that we get in the bitwise operation in, in binary is actually zero or one, we know that that number is a what? Is if it's actually one, we know that that number is what is not a power of what? Of two. But if it's zero, so any number that actually resolves to zero, um, let's say we can say something like one zero zero will be a power of what? Of two. Um one zero one one zero would be a power of what of two and we can say no actually one one zero 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 would be a power of two and let's say zero one one would not be a power of two so with this knowledge in place let's look at actually how we can actually solve this problem so the first thing we want to check is what if n is greater than what than zero so we'd we'll write an if statement and say if n is what is greater than what zero. So after checking if n is greater than zero, the next thing is actually is to actually write the operation that actually performs the bitwise oper operation for us to actually check if n is what is a power of two. And to do that, we simply need to compare the value of this to n by simply saying and and what n and what n bitwise bitwise and n minus one then would we'll say this equal to what to zero we'll just check if it's equal to what to zero then what we want to do is what return true if it is and if it's not, we want to what? Return false. So simply say what we are doing here is that we are checking, we are checking that n is actually a power of two or not. So the line n and n minus one is actually checking that is actually checking that n you know, n so the value n and n minus one is actually checking if the other bits in what in n is what is more than what one. So anything that is a power of two can only be can only only one of the value can be set to what to um to zero to sorry to one. So if we have a value of one zero zero in binary, we know that this is a power of two. Or if we have a value of one one zero, sorry, of zero one one, we know that this is not a power of two in binary. We know that this will not be a power of two because more than one of the value is set to what? To um okay, so let us test that our code actually works by simply just testing it against the test cases. And, um, okay, so, and um, yes, our code actually works. As you can see, all our test cases are um, completed. But if you notice something, the time it took for this code to run, it's, it's significantly smaller than the time it took for our first code to run. So basically, from this now, we can say that this code that we've, this second code that we've written now, that run in seven, nine, four millisecond is actually faster than the first one that we wrote. So basically, we can say that this our code, this code is actually more efficient than the one we wrote the first time. So the, the time complexity of this code should resolve to omega of 
one. And the time complexity of the first one should resolve to what? Omega log of n. Because it was a it's a recursive function that keeps on what calling itself. So that is um, the difference between an efficient, a more looking at the efficiency of a solution by simply what refactoring it. Okay, so that being said, we can now go ahead to what to submit our solution. And after attempting, we can go ahead to submit our solution. I'm just going to submit our solution. So after submitting our solution, I'm just going to clear the screen here. I'm going to clear the screen just so that we can see what we're working with. Okay, yeah. So after submitting our solution, we can actually see, we can actually see that um, code words, code words gives us or provide us several other solutions that have been implemented for the same problems. Now we can compare our, our solution with solutions that people have actually written and, and actually see, you know, if our solution is actually the best, you know, where it sits when it comes to be best practices for the same problem we're trying to solve. As you can see, based on, um, based on, um, based on the votes for this solution, this is the best practice. This is a solution that runs the fastest and you know the most efficient of it. You can also vote on how clever a solution is and several other things. So this is why we also advise that you use code words to solve um, problems, algorithm problems um, in for DSA.